In today's video, we will look at the types of activity groups that OTs utilize according to Mosey's taxonomy to help clients attain better occupational performance and participation. If you like this content, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Welcome back to the OT Minute. My name is Arno. There are several types of groups and various taxonomies out there. In today's video, we will unpack Ann Cronin and Mosey's taxonomy for activity groups, which is the main one that we learned in grad school and the one that I studied when preparing for my OT board exam. A good understanding of these types of groups is important because groups are one of the therapeutic tools and contexts that OTs may choose to utilize to help clients. Mosey proposed six types of activity groups. Let's run through them in detail and then I'll give you some tips at the end of the video for simplifying this and making it easier to memorize and recall when needed. The first type of group is evaluation groups. The purpose of evaluation groups is to assess the skills and assets or limitations of an individual using a group context. These groups allow therapists to get a good sense of the strengths and weaknesses that a client may have using a group context as opposed to an individual one-on-one -on -one context. An example of this might be in an inpatient psychiatric setting where individuals are working on crafts together. This context affords the therapist the opportunity to see and assess patients' social skills, like are they questioning or thanking other group members? A group like this also affords the therapist the opportunity to look at other skills like fine motor skills or attention or initiation and sequencing. The therapist can use the information gained by assessing their performance in the group to then formulate uh, interventions for each patient. Next, we have thematic groups, which focus on helping participants of the group acquire specific skills or knowledge regarding a specific activity or set of activities. The key difference between this and the next group is that thematic groups actually do and practice the skills and activities that they are going to try to develop during group times. Therefore, a thematic group is designed to give participants opportunities to learn new skills and knowledge while also providing them opportunities to practice them in the group meeting. For example, this might be a money management group where the individual actually sets up their budget and tracks expenses while in the group. The group actually practices money management skills and knowledge while they're in their group context. The next type of groups is a topical group. These groups discuss the topic of the group and may talk about the knowledge and skills necessary for certain activities, but the doing of the task or activities is reserved for when the group is not together and each member is out and about doing their individual thing out and about in the community. Meeting times mainly consist of discussion of relevant topics to the group's function and setting goals for learning and practicing the skills or knowledge that they discuss during their group times. This type of group can be further broken down into two subtypes. A topical group can be an anticipatory group, meaning that the topics or focus of the group is in regards to future or anticipated activities, or it can be a concurrent topical group, meaning the group is focused on a topic or activity that members are currently doing in the community outside of group times. An example of an anticipatory group might be a baby basics class where a therapist facilitates a group for prenatal mothers and fathers to learn what to expect regarding the tasks and activities that they might soon have to do as parents, such as establishing new rhythms, what are the typical feeding schedules for babies, how do you swaddle the newborn or change a diaper, and maybe some safety things to be aware of for the first few days or weeks of a baby's life. These soon-to-be parents may be discussing the skills and knowledge regarding being a parent to a newborn, but they're not actively engaging and actually doing the task of taking care of a newborn baby while in the group. An example of a concurrent group would be a parenting group that discusses important parenting topics such as positive behavior management during group times where they get to set goals and seek feedback and then try to implement the strategies at home during the week and then maybe they'll come back the next week to get more feedback. Next, we have a task-oriented groups. Task-oriented groups focus on raising individuals' awareness as they engage in tasks and activities as a group. This can raise both awareness of themselves as an individual or the group can promote improved awareness of others. The activity in these groups help to foster a deeper connection of a group's participants' thoughts and feelings to their actions. For example, say a group is tasked with creating the highest tower out of an odd mix of materials within a certain time period. That is the activity of the group. Then at certain points of time during the group, 
and after the activity perhaps the occupational therapist facilitates discussion regarding the internal process that everyone is experiencing to facilitate increased awareness for example at the end of the activity the therapist may ask something like did anyone feel sidelined in the process of completing the task how did you, that affect you how did you respond to feeling that way for example someone in the group's ideas may not have been used and they may have shut down or have become angry at certain parts of the task this helps to raise awareness of the group members by prompting them to check within themselves if they had similar feelings. And the discussion can also prompt others who may not have noticed others' feelings to have a better awareness of what others might be feeling or thinking. The next type of group that Mosey identified is developmental groups. As the name suggests, these groups focus on developmental milestones and fostering appropriate uh, development. Specifically, these groups are designed to facilitate interpersonal interaction skills. There are five categories of developmental groups that are sequential in development, and a therapist who uses developmental groups will use the right level of group to facilitate the just right challenge for individuals to where they can progress and strengthen their social skills in a challenging environment, yet supportive enough for them in order to develop more effective, developmentally appropriate social skills. For example, if a four-year-old child is delayed in their social development, they may interact minimally with kids around them when they play. This is also called parallel play, which means that they are interacting with their peers in a little bit of an immature way, especially if they cannot do any more complex social interactions. Developmentally, a four-year-old should be able to socially interact and work together on short collaborative tasks that are obviously age appropriate for short periods of time. So if the child is unable to do this, then facilitating a group such as a simple age appropriate craft group where they get to practice skills such as sharing items and working together with a little bit of increased interaction for short periods of time uh, on a collaborative task, this would be a good thing to afford them the chance to build those skills that they may not have yet. As I mentioned, there are several types of developmental groups, which I won't dive into in this video, but feel free to drop a comment down below if you'd like me to make a video reviewing them as well. Finally, we have instrumental groups. Instrumental groups are a bit unique because these groups accept that group members are not likely going to change or improve in a particular area. Therefore, instrumental groups focus on maintaining function and maximizing potential. So these groups support group members and offer them safe environments to engage in occupation. An example of this might be an alcoholic support group for individuals with substance abuse disorder. In this example, the group understanding is that they may never recover fully from their addiction or desire to use alcohol, but the group offers them support and helps them to live their best alcohol-free lives that they can by minimizing and preventing relapses. Therefore, maintaining their sobriety and level of function is the main focus. Let's walk through a few helpful notes that will hopefully help make remembering these groups a little bit easier. All right, guys, we have our visual summary here of Mosey's six types of activity groups. On the left, we have a mnemonic that might be helpful if you are trying to remember the names of the six groups. I kind of use this question, what do good OT group leaders do? They evaluate topics that task inquisitive dreamers. I imagine there's probably better mnemonics out there. So if you think of something that's better, feel free to drop that down below. Again, evaluates for evaluation, topics for topical, that, thematic, task, task-oriented, inquisitive, instrumental, dreamers, developmental. Most of these line up kind of nicely, except for maybe thematic and inquisitive. On the right, you'll see word associations. So for this taxonomy, what works best for me is just simple word associations. So when I think evaluation group, I think assess. So this is about assessing skills and knowledge of the group participants, a topical group, and this is gonna be more of a discussion group where they discuss the topic that they're working on or that they're targeting during their group times. And then they do it out and about in the community. And again, there's the two types, uh, which I don't think is particularly that important, as long as you understand the purpose of the topical group, which is really to discuss or work on setting goals and then doing the task out in the community or at a later date. And then there's thematic, which is all about doing. This is where you're actually using your group time to do the skills and tasks that are part of the group goals. And then there's task-oriented, which is all about increasing self-awareness or increasing awareness of others. Instrumental groups, again, is about maintaining, so I associate 
associate maintain with instrumental. This is all about maintaining function, maximizing potential for individuals who we know that maybe they will not necessarily be able to get rid of whatever their functional ailment is. And when we think developmental, think social skills. So I hope this is helpful in summarizing it and feel free to make it your own. Again, if you've got a better mnemonic or better study tips, feel free to drop that down below in our comment section. Thank you so much again for joining me on the OT Minute. As always, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want more OT related content. If you found this to be helpful, please let me know by dropping a like or a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.